What's going on Ecom Dominators? Cynthia here and inside my Facebook group I asked if anyone had any questions I was going to do a Q&A. So here we are and I've got a lot of requests that you guys prefer to do the Q&A in a video format versus just me typing my response back to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and start um, seeing what questions. I'm going to look the questions up on my phone and then if there is some clarification needed I'm going to go ahead and do it on the computer okay so the first question is from Christina and she said I remember that you mentioned about hit and targeting okay how do we find these okay I have a whole separate section of this um, inside of my boot camp, I talk a lot more in depth about hit and targeting. And actually, what I love about the hit and target keywords is that your competitors aren't using these keywords, right? Your competitors are going for the keywords that are the obvious, right? So, say for example, you are in the golf niche, right? You like are going to target people that like golf, people that like golf equipment, people that like golf celebrities you know like Tiger Woods um, and those are all great and they could still make you a lot of money and they're great targets however how are you going to separate yourself from the market from your other competitors and that's by um, going after the keywords that are not the most common keywords for your niche okay and I literally have a whole section on how you can do it and literally m one of my and all, most of my um, best performing campaigns are targeting keywords that are not within my niche because say for an example you are in the golf niche right and say that you apply the strategies that I teach you inside my course and you go and target cat lovers right people that like cats okay have never seen golf products in their lives right so usually people that likes golf doesn't necessarily mean they go on Facebook and click oh I like golf golf um, golf celebrities you know th that doesn't necessarily mean that but if you target cat celebrities a completely new keyword they've never seen golf products before right um, and so that's how you can dominate that specific market all right so great question um, the next question is from Philip and he said do you recommend advertising on Instagram or Pinterest? Okay. Now, I always do recommend getting your traffic sources from multiple different social media platforms. Um, inside my course, of course, I don't just teach Facebook. I talk about Pinterest, Instagram, uh, Twitter, you know, um, you know, even Etsy. You know how to get passive income from Etsy, okay? And also about SEOs. But in the future, I'm also going to release... Um, Snapchat ads. I'm going to release um, just so many other, you know, social media um, places where you can drive traffic. Okay, even Reddit. Okay, um, so don't just depend on Facebook because with just Facebook alone, it it what if your account gets banned? Okay. People get so scared because they're going to lose their pixel and as we all know the pixel has a lot of data that's a huge asset but if you don't go ahead and kind of diversify your traffic get multiple streams of traffic don't just rely on one and you're going to find yourself in a rut if something ever happens to your Facebook account um, so far none of my Facebook account um, has ever gotten banned or frozen so um, thank goodness but the next question is from Jamie and uh, she said do you recommend opening an Etsy store and and, and Amazon merch uh, sure why not um, you know I'm always uh, loving when people can find other ways to earn passive income so you know Etsy I have it there and like I said before I have an Etsy store but my main focus is always going to be Shopify but the Etsy is there because I'm harnessing the just the customer base on there I don't even have to run ads and I'm getting sales every day okay but 
you know, it's same thing for Amazon merch. You know, there's no branding as you know the same thing as Etsy. There's no such thing as branding, so you're not really building a type of asset, but it's just a great way to kind of earn passive income. All right. So the next question is from Ralph. Okay, and he asks, can't afford to purchase designs. Any tips? Okay, um, there are a couple of websites. One of them is called uh shutterstock.com and the other one is called i believe iStockphotos.com and what it is is that you can actually purchase the commercial license which then you can use their design on a t-shirt and actually sell it okay now of course you have to do your own due diligence to make sure that that's the case, right? That you're not infringing on someone else's work, okay? So, but usually you can. So I'm go here and show you what I mean. So I'm go here and I'm type in I stock photos. Okay. Uh, I believe it's the first one. Let's take a look. All right. And let's say for an example, you are in the dog niche. So let's type in dog. Already. Um, let's just say you're looking for like a graphic design. Already. Okay. okay, say you want to use this one on a t-shirt, okay? Maybe just one of these, okay? Um, these are really great, uh, you know, graphics to put on a mug, t-shirt, necklace, whatever it could be. But if you look down here, okay, they have something called the extended license. And if you go ahead and click on that, okay, um, you can actually uh, select um, right here, okay, and you can download the image. Now, for the extended license, it's a little bit more expensive and you're going to have to pay for that, but... Um, let's see, I just want to show you what they actually say when you click on it. Okay, if you come down here, it says, why do I need an extended license? If you buy the extended license, you can actually use it for physical products. It says it right here. These items um, for resale includes posters, postcard, mugs, t-shirts, okay? So um, if you are planning to, if you can't afford designs, um, you can actually come here and Hopefully get something that's cheaper. This one is, you know, 12 bucks, okay? I don't know if it's actually you have to buy extra, pay extra to get the extended license, but honestly, 12 bucks and you get, you know, four of these designs, that uh, seems pretty, it's like a pretty good deal, okay? Um, but then again, you don't know how many people are using the same exact designs, you know, is it going to be unique enough um, that you don't have any competition because the whole advantage of print on demand is that you have a unique design all the time, every time, and that you're not competing with someone else, right? So, um, you know, you have that to think about. But, you know, like you said, if you don't, if you're crunching on money and you want to um, get some pre made designs, you can actually come here and get the extended license and you can actually resell them here, okay? But of course, like I said before, do your own research um, and figure that out, okay? I believe there's so many other websites. Like I said, Shutterstock is a great one to go and take a look at, all right? So let's come back over here. Now, Chad asks, um, how do I write a good product description? Um, you can obviously hire someone on Fiverr, all right? And what happens, or you go to Upwork, okay? There are two great sites. Um, now, with product descriptions, you just have to be a little bit creative about it. And the um, sites, I usually look at other people's sites, okay? And to make sure, just to kind of get an idea how they're writing it and then kind of make it my own, see how they're doing it. But what I love is AF Nation, okay? They have literally one of the best product descriptions, okay? And why not learn from the best, okay? So if you look here, um, some of their uh, the tanks, okay? They're not just trying to sell you the t-shirt, the all right? They're trying to sell you on the story, okay? And when you can create a good story behind it, people are more prone to purchase it, okay? So say for an example, uh, let's just pick one of them. 
let's pick this one. Okay, this one is obviously about Abraham Lincoln, right? And kind of read these descriptions. How are they, um, you know, uh, leveraging this story to sell this um, tank, okay? And believe me, this website is very profitable. It's very successful. And, you know, look at how they are writing their story, right? It doesn't have to be long, just a paragraph, right? You can always hire someone if you don't want to write it. But this is how I usually go out there and look at how they're doing it and kind of put my own spin based on my niche. Obviously, I'm not in the political niche, but um, have a good story. It doesn't matter if you're in the dog niche or the cat niche, right? Have a story behind each t-shirt and um, people buy into the story. All right, is what I'm trying to say. Um, great question. So the next question is from um, Ava, and she asks, uh, should I pause my ads overnight or keep it running? Um, I usually keep it running overnight because when you pause your ads, it messes with the optimization. So I never touch it once it starts running. So I just usually leave it overnight. Um, you're really not going to miss out that much. Uh, so just, I, I usually leave it. I don't pause it. The next question is from Sarah and she asks, how often should I be posting on my Facebook fan page? Okay. Um, for me, you need to be posting at least once a day. I believe I made a video about this in my YouTube channel, but um, you need to be posting, um, well for me, I post twice a day, so once at 8 a.m. and then the second time at 9 p.m., okay? And what I what Facebook like is an active fan page because what happens if Facebook knows that you're active, right? They're going to lower your CPM, which means lower ad costs to you, okay? Knowing that your Facebook fan page is active, right? So if you're going to upload, you know, a post once per month, you know, Facebook is not going to take you that seriously, okay? So all, I always have all of my posts scheduled for 8 to 9, I mean 8 a.m. and also 9 p.m. But of course, you can have a VA to help you do it, okay? Next question is by Sam and he asks, how do I edit a dark post? Okay, now you can only edit a dark post if you have not ran an ad to that post, okay? If you created the post and you want to change it, you can still edit it if you had, you know, run an actual ad to it, okay? You can't have an ad attached to that post or in, you can't edit it. You just have to create a new one but if you are ran it, obviously create a new one and then, um, you know, make your changes there. Okay. So next question is from Sean and he asks, how often should I send an email to my list? Now for me, preferably once a week and on every single holiday. Um, now for me, depending on your niche, um, certain days of the week actually performs better for me. I find that on Friday it I actually when I email my list on Fridays I actually have a higher open rate and also more people purchasing Friday on Fridays versus Mondays Tuesdays, you know weekends, you know um, You know, I don't know if it has to do with the weekends people are just out not buying or you know, people just go to work Monday. I, I don't know, but Fridays usually converts the best. But obviously, it's something you need to test out yourself. Okay, but I recommend once a week and also on holidays. Now, the next question is by Wendell, and he said, "Drop shipping from AliExpress or print on demand." Um, believe it or not, I actually started out drop shipping from AliExpress, but because of the long shipment times, it has really upset a lot of my customers and that's why I don't believe it's a real, true business model, okay? Um, it's not a sustainable business model and, you know, and I was always trying to email my list but I realized that my retention rate is so low because of like the long shipment times and terrible customer service, you know, I was re really not getting those people to come back, right? And what ha ended up happening is I went, switched from drop shipping to print on demand and what a difference because all of my print on demand suppliers are inside of the US and fast shipping time meaning more happy customers. And like I would be looking at my returning customer rate, it's literally at 12% and for me that's very good. 12% uh, customer retention rate uh, is pretty good, okay? Because literally my customer retention rate for 
drop shipping was non-existent like no one came back okay so last question all right um wayne asks what do you think about pillow profits uh I don't really like Pillow Profits because they ship from China and like their shipment times are just very long. I believe I searched this before, but it's just like, okay, look, take a look at this. It takes five to seven days, so about a week for production, and then it takes an additional 10 to 15 days. Um, for shipping okay uh, I mean that sounds like about a month or so and sometimes it's not even accurate what they post here because from my experience um, with shipping overseas there's a lot of customs and so sometimes they'll say like oh it's just two weeks but it end up being a month or two months right so I don't really like I don't I never use print on demand that's overseas period okay Unless they also have a warehouse inside the US, then that's when I'll be using them. But overall, I do not use anything, you know, um, overseas. However, for Pillow Profits, I have heard great reviews from them. They are a legitimate company. Um, I've heard more positive reviews from them than most companies that ship overseas, okay? So, I hope you guys got a lot out of this. I gotta go right now because I'm running late. But I always do these Q&As um, inside of my group. If you are not inside of my group, go ahead and click the link down below. I have a link where you can join my Facebook group. We have over 26,000 you know, entrepreneurs there, which um, just kind of asking questions, bouncing ideas off of each other. You know, if you're not in there, you know, get in there, okay? Because I go in there and I answer every single question, every single problem that everyone has because um, I don't want anyone to be stuck, okay? And you know, you don't even have to be in my course for me to answer your questions, okay? But if you have any questions, make sure to join my group and ask them when I do these Q&As, all right? So I gotta go, but I will see you in the next one and talk to you later.